Dr. Brown. Thank you for joining and please take it from here. Hey, thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you for, uh, also for bringing this together. Um, it's been uh, really awesome. Some of my team team members at Grapevine have attended some of the earlier sessions and, and they have nothing but good things to say. So huge kudos to you uh, for bringing this together, especially virtually. Um, cool. Well, uh, hey guys, um, there are about uh, 70 of you. It's really, really nice to, uh, nice to meet you all. Um, my name is uh, Jabron Malik. Um, I am the Director of Marketing over at uh, Grapevine Logic. Um, we are an influencer marketing company based in, in Boston. Um, been kicking around the Boston startup scene, um, doing marketing stuff for a while. Got my start at uh, Mass Challenge, which is where I connected with um, Stephanie and um, have just been doing some, you know, content uh, since. And so I'm really excited to talk to you guys uh, today about, um, you know, how to uh, market on and build great content on a bootstrap budget and also um, something near and dear in my heart to my heart, which is creating content um, with limited uh, resources and staffing um, as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and um, share my screen. Awesome. Okay, so let's talk about building content. This will be just a quick webinar primer on uh, building great content um, that closes. I already introduced myself, um, marketing guy, uh, loves seeing startups build incredible content. Um, uh, a little bit about Grapevine before we get started. Um, uh, so um, at Grapevine, we deal with all, all types of content, um, but we essentially combine influencer discovery and analytics with strategy and execution uh, to help uh, our clients solve every piece of the influencer marketing puzzle. And we have clients that range from all the way from, uh, uh, from you know, Fortune 500 companies to uh, even some startups based in Boston. Um, so before we begin, um, there will be a Q&A at the end of the session. Uh, so don't worry, um, feel free to ask questions all throughout. Um, Stephanie um, will be keeping track of them and uh, so you will not be um, ignored. So uh, content is, is tough. Um, creating content is one of the most rewarding, if not most challenging side to running a business. Um, and even if that is also true, um, it's also super underrated. Um, cause you know, from, from what I've seen when building out startup teams, um, most entrepreneurs will kind of mainly focus on the engineering and the sales side when building their uh, initial startup teams. However, um, how are you necessarily going to, uh, let the world know about your great product, um, without content, right? And how is your sales team going to sell without compelling collateral? And unfortunately, there's no kind of one size fits all approach to generating your content stack, um, because if there wasn't a if there was a one size fit, then there would be no need for <laughs> webinars like this. So every brand's uh, content strategy is kind of necessarily different, um, and strategies can differ based on size of staff, type of industry, and most importantly, what your customers find most valuable. Um, but uh, there are some basic steps you can make and some basic building blocks you can create with your content strategy that can definitely apply to you know, every uh, startup and business. So throughout the session, what I hope you'll learn is a couple of basics around um, you know, ideating content, uh, building content, distributing content, and then ultimately um, repurposing that content to really make sure it closes sales. So um, ideation, you know, generating content ideas. And remember going to school and having your teachers giving you all these like super structured training and plans for literally every single paper. Um, well, it's time to bring all that back because research is important for building content. Um, at the end of the day, all content is ultimately an answer to a certain question. If you've created your brand the right way, you'll know that you're trying to solve for some kind of existential problem that your customers are currently facing. So focus on that. If you don't exactly know what your customers are asking, um, then it's time to do some more research. Um, some really easy ways to do that uh, is, is one, uh, try putting together a buyer persona. You really need to understand um, uh, who you want to be reading your blog posts. Is it a young entrepreneur with a lot of ambition? Is it a pregnant mother looking to make her life a little bit easier? 
take a close look at your social media tools and CRM to get a better sense of who your customers are. Still can't get a sense of who exactly they are. It's, it's also really, really valuable to interview them, interview them too. Um, I did this just the other day when I was working on a case study with a client and asked them, hey, like, um, if we were to send you an email with blog content, what subject lines or what kind of content would inspire you to click on that email or read that blog article? Your customers are actually your most helpful people when it comes to creating content. Um, if you still need a little bit of help painting a better picture of what kind of content your audience will love, then a few tools you can use are, um, you know, Twitter advanced search. You can use Twitter search tools to give a better idea of what your uh, ideal customers are talking about. You can even punch in a few word choice keywords on Quora and see what threads uh, people are creating based on the questions you want to answer. And what's also useful is using tools like SEMrush or Ahrefs uh, to kind of look at what your competitors are writing about or looking at what uh, your competitors are posting on their social media feeds. Don't feel bad about copying ideas and content from your competitors. Um, feel great about writing something that you did better. You can make some better content than your competitors. And speaking of building content, um, you know, designing good content is really, really important once you've done the right research. So the best way to get started on building great content is to actually um, build a pillar page. So what I hope what you get from this uh, is that, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to be churning out content like every single day. Um, it's really, really important to get started with building a pillar page. These are the basic building blocks of your content strategy. And as how HubSpot defines it, a pillar page covers all aspects of the topic on a single page with more with room for more in-depth reporting in more detailed cluster blog posts that hyperlink back to the pillar page. Pillar pages will broadly cover a topic that you're specializing in and cluster content is addressing a specific keyword related to that topic in depth within that pillar page. Um, pillar pages typically about have about 2,000 to 4,000 words of keyword heavy content. It's broken into nice, neat sections. It's hyperlinked to relevant pages and it's extremely high quality. It is well-designed, festooned with good visuals and has shareable tidbits that people can share on, on social media. Um, so, uh, you know, you can create, for example, if you wanted to create like a, a, a gaming blog, right? Um, your pillar page could be called like, this is the ultimate guide to Apex Legends. This guide would, for example, cover a host of topics relevant to being great at a certain video game. The pillar content will then define your content calendar, um, which can break off into cluster content. Typically, cluster content um, is uh, hyperlinked from your pillar content, and it's in-depth content that you can link back. So for example, on that same gaming blog, right, if I were to write that ultimate guide, cluster content that links back to my pillar could be in-depth articles such as um, how to get better at um, navigation or how to get better at this one particular character. Um, there is a lot of different awesome formats, easy formats you can use for your cluster content. So these are anything from lists, listicles, um, commentary, comparisons of other solutions, um, tutorials, uh, infographics, um, interviews with key opinion leaders, um, guest posts from influencers, uh, a status update on a certain project or a case study um, from one of your uh, customers. Um, what's also really, really important to designing good content is um, building good content structure. Um, and there's going to be a session later on in the day about um, SEO, but I just wanted to kind of tee it up for you guys uh, right here. Um, so when you're actually building your basic content structure, you want to make sure that um, it's structured properly, that uh, you use the right title, and that your title is actually descriptive of what you're going to be talking about. Um, also, you want to make sure that it's formatted correctly, and this is a mistake I see a lot of marketers make when creating blogs, is that um, WordPress has a lot of powerful tools to make sure that your blog post is readable. Um, you know, a lot of people will think that to make, a lot of people will go and uh, when they're making headers, they'll just like make a bullet point and put it in bold that, hey, this is a header, but you actually have to make the effort and, you know, click that H2 button to actually make that readable um, for Google. And then at the end of the then at the end of the post, you'll want to provide a kind of strong uh, call to action 
that will inspire the reader to take action on your posts. And here's like a very, very easy, you know, graphic from SEO Moz that kind of outlines uh, how, you know, good blog posts are built. And then when you're actually writing that blog, um, we're gonna talk a little bit about copywriting. Um, so there's a really, really easy trick and it's called ADA. Um, so ADA stands for attention, interest, desire, um, and action. And so um, with attention, right, it's 73% it's of buying decisions are made at the point where people first come into contact with your content. So that's a headline, that's a subject line in an email. Um, that is uh, your, a copy on your social media post and it's the first step to winning the trust of your prospects. The post headline is a really, really easy way to do this. And again, you'll wanna think from the uh, perspective of your prospect. What is it that you want them to search to find you on Google. You know, some quick examples of some compelling headlines that do, uh, that do really well is, for example, um, you know, 20 ways to find customers for your e-commerce store, or three easy ways to boost traffic on your website, or um, the ultimate guide to SEO uh, for e-commerce startups. Um, these headlines can immediately get to the core of what people want and need to know. Uh, so you don't want to bury the lead. So I, interest. So now that you've earned attention of your prospect, um, you'll want to use kind of smart subheadlines and subheaders to let your audience know that your content is actually worthwhile. And so it's really using that first uh, paragraph. Um, try kind of breaking things out into bullet points and uh, letting your audience know that here's what you're going to learn um, from this certain post. And then desire. So desire is kind of the, the, the meat of where your content should be. Make sure, as we talked about in the last section, make sure your content is well designed. Use bullet points to make uh, your points simple and readable. Um, you're not writing, you are, you're building, right? So build like something that people will want to share, that they'll be excited about. Um, if you're having trouble with some of the design stuff like infographics, I really recommend you use tools like Canva to make beautiful infographics to make your content more digestible. They have a ton of really easy templates to use. Um, I've used it a lot. Um, even PowerPoint itself can help you create really awesome assets. So definitely use all the tools that are available to you to make awesome, uh, well-designed content. And then finally, action. You know, make an offer that the prospect can't refuse. Um, I've seen tons of lowball offers or calls to actions that I just roll my eyes at. Um, for example, uh, when I'm reading a, you know, a white paper, um, what am I going to do with a one-week free trial that they promise at the end of reading that white paper? Um, however, if I had like an entire month to make my product an existential need, an existential part of a customer's business, then I'm more likely to ultimately convert into a paying customer. Different things work for different startups and different businesses, so de definitely play around and optimize an A-B test for different calls um, to action. Um, quick question for you, Gibran. So I know that writing like content can be super time consuming, so I was curious if you had any advice for how people could be more efficient like writing blogs in the future yeah that's a great question and you know that goes into talking about content cadence so you know there's more than a few people even i asked myself you know uh, a couple years back you know how often should i be posting or gosh you know i have i'm doing so many other things i don't have time to write such long content nor do i have the budget to hire a freelancer so unfortunately a lot of building content comes down to um, a matter of, of discipline and it's really, really valuable to just block out an entire morning or an evening to just churn something out. And since you're probably the founder and CEO of your business, by default, that makes you a subject matter expert. So all the knowledge is already within you. It's just a matter of spending a morning or an evening um, just like cranking out, just word vomiting, right? Like 2,000 words onto a document. It doesn't have to be formatted. It can just be a brain dump. Um, and then, uh, and so once you've done that brain dump, you can just um, spend the next day looking at it, making it neater, having one of your friends look at it, um, and you can just parse it all out later. And then the thing about that is if you spend all that time creating that, you know, 2,500 word document, that 4,000 word document, um, all the content that you need 
is already right there for your for your cluster content because what you did then when you were uh, doing that word vomit is you were building the first draft for your pillar content and so all you have to do once you publish that pillar content is take those little pieces those sections and just expand on that just throw in a thousand more words into those into those pieces that you can expand to make that a full blog post of its own and so when I think of those pillar pages, I think of it as marketing campaigns. So I would probably say you're probably going to want to build like one or two uh, strong pillar pages a quarter um, with pillar content at a clip of like one or two a week when you're just getting started. Um, it's really, really important. It's, it's less about how much content you produce, but more how consistently you can produce that. You're, uh, you're trying to build a relationship with your audience, your email newsletter list, with the people that you want to use your product. And so you wanna also make sure that you um, are staying on a consistent schedule and that people know when to expect to see your content. Got it, thank you. Cool. Um, so getting into some of the distribution. Um, so similar uh, to kind of expanding on what you already wrote on your pillar page, you should also be repurposing that same content um, across every channel that your audience lives in. I'm sure uh, a lot of you have listened to or heard Gary Vaynerchuk absolutely just screaming about um, how he kind of chops up his content into different mediums. Um, as much as I find Gary Vaynerchuk annoying, he's very, very right in this, in this aspect. It, one long blog post uh, or one uh, pillar page um, can create awesome uh, branded LinkedIn posts, can create awesome Facebook posts and social media posts. Um, and so you want to convert that post into, you know, an infographic or um, you can convert that into a white paper or you can convert a series of uh, blog posts into um, an ebook. You can also turn key findings into a quick image and promote it uh, with boosted posts. Um, but when you create that content, you first want to, you know, you want to make sure that, you know, you write that great email. You spent so much time creating your content, you want to make sure that the world sees it. So write first an email to like your general email to your newsletter list, but then also take some time to single out, um, you know, five or 10 people who you really, really trust within your business network and send a personal note to them, asking them to give feedback and to also um, promote it um, on their networks. Um, then you'll also uh, in that email, you'll also want to include some easy social share links. Um, Click to tweet um, is a really good service to create um, automated Twitter uh, automated tweets for people that click on something. Um, and then you want to make sure that your content on social is visual. And then uh, as part of your content engine, uh, you want to amplify your best performing content uh, with solutions like Facebook ads. 50 to $100 spends can actually go uh, a long way um, as a test. Um, a quick question before yep. you go to this next slide. Um, so what content like can be used like throughout the funnel? So not just in the beginning when people are learning about you, but kind of through those other mm -hmm. steps. Like, is there anything that kind of works for multiple touch points? Yeah, um, so actually uh, that's a really good question. And uh, the next slide, I think definitely, uh, you know, Duzzle can do a lot for that. So I think the, the best kind of content and is definitely throughout all steps of the funnel is investing in video um, content. Uh, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world just by virtue of, uh, of it being owned by owned by Google, and oftentimes a lot of uh, search results for simple queries will actually recommend YouTube videos. Uh, YouTube videos first. Um, so YouTube video content is really really easy to um, create. All you have to do is get a tripod from Amazon or something, uh, take your iPhone and just do like a selfie video, and use very very basic um, uh, tools uh, like uh, iMovie to 
to create some text overlays, but what you can do with video content is you can post, um, you know, that top of the funnel content on YouTube, right? That's like how to do X with this tool or um, how to increase sales with my product or even hire an influencer and do a review of that product or a comparison. So once you get that basic um, YouTube content, what you can then do is you can go back into iMovie or something and chop that content up into little pieces and then um, embed that into consideration blog posts or, um, or even uh, create uh, individual Facebook or Instagram ads or LinkedIn ads using bits of that video content. And so video content is definitely something that uh, you can use at top of the funnel, the middle of the funnel, and then even at the um, bottom of the funnel, you can create different versions uh, based on if you've set up your Facebook pixels right, um, if you've set up your tracking analytics right, you can deliver specialized video content to each um, stage of the funnel. And so, and yep, and that's basically some really quick tips to you know building the foundations of your content strategy. Remember that the key to creating great content is you know once so you, before you know there's no easy way to do it. All you have to do is put a lot of heart, soul, and energy into creating those high quality pillar pages. Then they can funnel out into smaller blog posts. Again, Google <laughs> will always rank quality over quantity as a search engine. Google is in the business of connecting people to solutions. So make sure that your content is the solution and make sure that your content is actually inspiring. Yeah, so I know that there's a couple of questions if you have a few minutes here, Jabron, that I'd love to ask you. Oh, absolutely. Um, so to kind of piggyback off of when you just mentioned to make sure that your content is like inspiring and helpful. I know one of the questions and concerns someone brought up in the chat was like, kind of like the worry of giving away what you know or what you're trying to sell as a service in your content. Is that something people should be worried about doing? Like what, I guess, like what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I mean, so basically you do, you're worried about like giving up the ghost or like, uh, you know, getting people too much of a behind the scenes looks like they can copy it. Right, right? like if you're an SEO consultant and you explain mm -hmm. how to do it, like the worry is is then people just do it and don't hire you for it. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. And yeah, so um, yes, blog posts should be helpful and and valuable, but I think that type of content, you shouldn't be too worried about it because you could write, um, and again, there's been so many, uh, you know, 4,000 word blog posts or books about um, SEO, but at the end of the day, like you're the expert. And so your job in that piece of content is to not only pitch your expertise, but to pitch your value as well. So at the call, so, you know, at a call to, in your call to action section, it's like, yes, you can do this all on your own. However, like my product or service is helps you do it so much easier and at cost. Uh, here's a call to action uh, that you can try it out for free for a month or something like that. It's really all in the call to action where you can really inspire people not to sort of copy what you're doing. Again, um, you know, blog posts and content shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be like giving away like all the secrets to your startup, but give people general tips and tricks to making sure that you're a subject matter expert. Gotcha. Um, that makes a lot of sense. Thank you. And another question here too that kind of came through. So in terms of publishing blog content, how, I'm not sure if there's a right answer for this, which is why I'm asking you, but is there like, how do you know like what what blog you want to publish to your company website versus like a medium website versus mm -hmm. like the LinkedIn blogging tool? Yep. Like there's so many of these different sites yep. out there. Like how do you kind of pick and choose which ones to post where? Yes. So um, although medium, it's really, really easy to format blog posts and it looks pretty know that Medium is in the business of getting clicks for Medium. Medium is not in the business of getting clicks for your website. So I strongly urge everyone to, if they haven't already, to build their own WordPress blog. It's super easy um, and have that in your built into your website because you want to be uh, using all that SEO goodness and all that all the content to be hosted on your website. 
Now that doesn't mean that you can't syndicate it on those platforms as well. It's really, really important to um, take pieces of your blog post and give it a more personal spin and include it on a LinkedIn article. Make sure you put a link into your website. And then also uh, Medium has really easy tools where you can syndicate um, blog content from your website onto Medium as well. But the number one source for all of your blog content should first and foremost be your own hosted WordPress blog or whatever blog you're using on your website. Gotcha, okay. Um, and this might be a little bit more nitty gritty. So if I'm getting a little off topic, let me know. But when you mentioned syndicating content, like if you syndicate your blog from like your blog to another site or you give someone permission to syndicate your content, like mm -hmm. does that hurt you when there's duplicate content out there or does it not matter? Like, I'm actually just kind of curious. Um, Mm -hmm. do, do you happen to know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you're on the call. I'm going to totally ask if you yeah. just happen to know this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's de so there is, um, so when you syndicate content, um, there's like in your Google Analytics software, there's um, some like magic you can use to make, it's like called like a RHEL canonical or something. It's like super technical and um, I'm more than happy to send you like a link to how it all works so you can share with the audience in a follow up. Yeah, no, that would be awesome to follow that up because I know I have that question. I'm sure a few others probably were thinking it too when you mentioned it. I feel like it comes up a lot um, in conversation. So that would be super helpful. Um, and then kind of another question, just bombarding you with all the questions now. No, no um, but like, are there any best practices for CTA? It's like, should you, when you finish writing a blog, like, should the CTA always be something like an ebook? Should it be a demo? Is there more ROI and something gated versus ungated? Kind of would love just to know what you've seen in the past because you have years of experience yeah. writing content. So curious to know what, what trends you've been seeing. Yeah. So there's been a huge push for um, in the marketing space lately for um, heavily, you know, ungated, uh, ungated content. And in terms of um, calls to action, uh, it's really about it's really about A B testing, right? It's about um, you know posting different versions of a similar post um, with different types of calls to action. But again, it also depends on what your you know what your sales goals are, right? Are your sales goals to drive um, you know more? Is it more awareness or is it driving more leads? And so it really depends. Um, I would say the most valuable pieces of of content that you can possibly create um, are very very data heavy um, kind of reports. Taking your internal data, putting it into a report that is gated behind an email. But some of the findings of that report are in a pillar page or a a blog post. Some of like the basic findings, but the more detailed breakdowns is gated behind a white paper or um, an ebook. Like there's a there's like a white paper database white paper that we published at Grapevine in 2017 it's still on the top five of, uh, of downloads um, on, on our website. And so uh, people really, really value data-driven um, data driven reports based on your company's like internal data just kind of filtered. Gotcha. Um, and kind of another question to piggyback off of that too, in terms of those data reports, like I remember Databox, which is, you know, kind of a local company here, like they do a great job in terms of, really mentioning like, you know, third parties and linking back to those sites. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of piggyback off of that, like what are your thoughts on people guest blogging on your own blog? Like, is that mm -hmm. a good thing? Are there certain people you should say no to? Cause I know I've gotten a lot of emails in the past where people are like, let me guest blog for you, let me guest blog for you. And you're just not mm -hmm. sure, you know, how often you want guest blogs, the types of people you want blogging on your site. Like, do you have any kind of like words of wisdom for that? Yeah, um, make sure that they're, they will be as valuable to you as you will be for them. The reason why they're asking you to guest blog is because they see some kind of SEO value in having their content and their links on your blog. So make sure that if the website that they're coming from that they represent can be of equal value and that they are a subject matter expert in their own field. Um, as well. There are so many like random like independent bloggers that will like email me like oh I want a guest blog but it's like they want to advertise their own like copywriting business or their own like blog their own like freelance blogging business 
but if they're coming from like a startup or something, then it's definitely like, oh, that's definitely that's something a relationship that I I want to build, right? And so when people come to you with an inbound request to guest blog, just make sure that the relationship that you're starting to build from there um, can be really really valuable to you as well, so that you can come back to them in a week or two and say like, hey, like, can I guest blog on your blog? Um, and that will help you uh, build better links. And then speaking of distributing content, and this just reminds me of another note in terms of um, link building, definitely when you're distributing content, take a look at, go back into tools like Ahrefs and, uh, and SEMrush and find blog posts on websites that are similar to what you just wrote about. Try to get their email address and email them as like, hey, I see on your website that you wrote like this ultimate guide to, um, you wrote about this guide to Apex Legends and link to this. However, I wrote a better guide over here uh, that you want, might want to take a look at. So that's a mm -hmm. quick, easy like link building strategy. And link building is a whole other kind of practice and webinar in and of itself. Yeah, well, you're mentioning that. I'm like, oh, we're going gonna, gonna to have to circle back with you sometime and rope you into kind of talking more about that. I definitely agree. It's a whole new beast. So uh, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, Gibran. Well, I think that covers it for today. Like, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, everyone, for joining and asking some awesome questions. Like, cannot thank you enough. Um, Gibran, any final words from your side? Yeah, again, thank you guys so much for listening to me talk about content. I love talking about content. And so if you want to talk about content or influencer marketing or anything to do in that related field, you can email me at jabron at com. You can find me on Twitter at Jabron Malik. And then you can also find me um, on LinkedIn. Just search for my name and I'll um, pop right up. Um, so you know, I hope, uh, you know, I get to talk to some of you guys, you know, offline. Um, maybe uh, we can all go for a run after quarantine is over. And uh, also just want to give another shout out. Thank you so much to Stephanie for inviting me and for putting this together. Also big shouts to the, the Grapevine team for listening in. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jabron. Guys, I did drop both his email and his LinkedIn in the chat. So definitely, you know, make sure you go connect with him, follow him on LinkedIn. He posts amazing stuff. And then I also included just now as well, um, the info for the next event, which will be happening in 25 minutes. It's all about podcasting. So now you can take all of your content knowledge from Jabron and kind of move it over to a di different new type space, like audio space. So hopefully, I'll see you there soon. Thank you so much, Jabron. Um, and I'll see everyone in a bit. Bye, guys.